Welcome to Low Tier Fun Tier, where I take a look at the Rank 1 lineup for a nation in War Thunder and pick out my favorite vehicles. Let's check out the British Air Tree. I'm going to pick out my favorite fighter, bomber, striker, and premium aircraft from Rank 1 in the British Air Tree and take them into the chaos of arcade battles, since that's what everybody does at Rank 1. My first pick is the Sea Gladiator Mark 1, a pretty basic biplane fighter. Like a good number of other planes, the Gladiator was part of the last generation of biplane fighters designed in the 1930s, just before World War II. And even though it was pretty advanced when it was introduced, it quickly got outpaced by monoplane designs. The Gladiator was widely exported and used as a second-tier fighter all over the world during the first couple of years of the war, serving with around 20 different air forces in some capacity, and finding its way into combat in almost every theater of the war. The Sea Gladiator was, obviously, the naval version of the Gladiator, and had an arrestor hook, as well as the ability to carry, um, like, stowed away lifeboats up under the fuselage that could be dropped down into the ocean. Now, the Sea Gladiator was retired rather quickly after entering service, but it did see action during the Battle of Britain and the Siege of Malta. Now, in War Thunder, the Sea Gladiator comes equipped with four Browning machine guns, which have a pretty low burst mass, but... So do most other fighters at rank 1, so, you know, it's on average. The plane, however, does have an absolutely insane level of maneuverability. You can flip the nose around like a UFO, and even though its guns are kind of wimpy and it's difficult to bring down targets with them, this thing dogfights like a champion. The big downside is that the plane is basically made out of flammable tissue paper and matchsticks, and it's really easy to shoot down. But if you can survive, its exceptional performance can help get some pretty solid kill totals. Next is the Hampton TB Mark I, a very solid bomber for a Rank I plane. The Hanley Page Hampton was introduced just before World War II broke out, and was replaced mid-war by larger bombers, but it still provided a capable airframe early in the war for bombing, maritime patrol, and reconnaissance duties. The Hampton served with the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Sweden, Australia, and even a few of them flew for the Soviet Navy. Notably, the Hampton participated in the UK's first bombing missions against Berlin in August of 1940. In War Thunder, there are two versions of the Hampton, which are almost identical, except the TB version, the torpedo bomber, has better loadouts, including the ability to carry a torpedo. Go figure. Now, I find the Hampton to be highly capable as a bomber, as it can carry a very heavy bomb load compared to most other Rank 1 bombers, and it even has a forward-firing machine gun. Now, the forward gun is not effective, but it is possible to occasionally shoot down planes with the Hampton, but in practice, the forward gun mostly ends up going unused or, you know, scoring some quick tags for assists as people fly by. Now, where the Hampton excels is mopping up ground targets. The respectable load of heavy bombs lets you really clean up some of the clusters of light ground targets in the low-tier maps, and it's not uncommon to take out 20 or more ground targets in one sortie if you can survive long enough. If you're lucky enough to get into a match with strategic bases, the Hampton can win the mission all by itself if you can survive a side climb and get up to altitude. Plus, it carries a torpedo, so... There's potential for attacking ships in naval battles, but at lower tier against maneuverable boats, the bombs might actually end up being a bit more useful. Either way, the potential is there, and the Hampton TB Mark I ended up being a great low-tier grinder for me back in the day. I love this thing.
My pick for a striker is the V-156B1. This is classified as a naval dive bomber, but it's actually a British version of the Vought SB-2U Vindicator, an American aircraft which was the first monoplane dive bomber delivered to the U.S. Navy in 1937. The Vindicator's service with the Royal Navy actually has a bit of an interesting twist. In addition to the first batch that the UK was operating, a second batch of planes, which were originally built for France, that you know were the result of an order they had placed before their defeat at the start of the war, ended up being offered to potential buyers at a discount after the French government was no longer able to complete the contract. Well, the Royal Navy stepped in, pretty eager to purchase another squadron of naval dive bombers, and picked up the uh, remainder of the planes. Now, the version built for France had different equipment than the Royal Navy was already flying, and proved unpopular with the British. They named it the Chesapeake, but its service life didn't really last long. They found that the engine just didn't deliver enough power for how they wanted to use the plane out on long-range patrols, and they ended up replacing it with the Ferry Swordfish biplane. Ouch. In War Thunder, the V-156 is a pretty basic Rank 1 dive bomber. It has four Browning machine guns, the same armament as the Sea Gladiator we looked at a few minutes ago, and it can carry either three small bombs or one big bomb. I usually go for the one big bomb. The plane ends up being pretty capable as a multi-role aircraft, even though it isn't really a monster in any particular role. It's surprisingly accurate in dive bombing, and actually has some good potential for close air support and ground battles. Overall, I find the V-156 to be a very well-rounded plane, and good fun to fly, even if its general performance is only average. Lastly, my pick for a premium, the Whirlaway. I bet that isn't the one you expected. Well, the Whirlaway is actually an Australian utility plane that was based on an American trainer from the 1930s called the NA-16. The plane served exclusively with Australia and entered service as a trainer in 1939. The outbreak of World War II forced the Australians to use the Whirlaway as a combat aircraft, even though it really wasn't intended for it, and it ended up being used in a variety of different roles, including as a recon plane, a fighter, and as a ground attack bomber. Now, as a combat plane, the Whirlaway proved to be rather underwhelming, and was outmatched by basically everything the Japanese had at the time, but in some situations it ended up being the only aircraft available to do a job, so up it went. As a recon plane, the Whirlaway ended up being moderately successful as its canopy provided some good visibility for the second crew member. In the ground attack role, the Whirlaway only saw limited service, but was successful and was regarded pretty well by the Australians, who found it to be an accurate bomber, and they also used it to drop supplies and messages that were considered too sensitive for uncoded radio communications. As a fighter, well... The Whirlaway shot down a grand total of one enemy aircraft in air combat, compared to several dozen losses. So, yeah. As a fun fact, a cousin of the Whirlaway, the T-6 Texan-1, was still flying into the 1990s in official capacities with a couple of different uh, customers. Now, in War Thunder, I love this thing. It's not a great fighter, and its two Vickers machine guns are kind of wimpy, but it carries bombs, it gets premium bonuses, and, well, it often gets ignored by the other team. Nobody really considers it much of a threat, and if you climb to use it like a more traditional bomber, you can sometimes rack up a surprising number of ground target kills. Overall, the Whirlaway is one of those planes that I find to be really fun to fly, even if it's not super effective in combat. Well, that about wraps up low tier fun tier for the British Air Tree. I hope you enjoyed this look at my favorite low B British planes. As always, thanks for watching.
We'll be right back.